Are you looking for some awesome effects? Get access to thousands of exclusive premium effects, free effects as well, with their super affordable pro memberships. Click the link in the description. Hey, what's up everyone? I am Chris Kelly. I am happy to be here on Alex's channel with the second intro to After Effects course. Today we are going to be talking about the highly requested topic, lower thirds. There are infinite ways to create lower thirds, but the tips I will share with you today will apply no matter what. Alright, so first thing is first, let's create a new composition. I'm just going to use these settings here and hit OK. Lower thirds generally consist of two lines, one for the name and one for the title. I'll start with my name here. Alright, let's align this text element to the center, and I'm going to duplicate the text layer now by hitting Ctrl D or Command D for Mac users. Hit P to bring up the position properties, and let's just move this along the x-axis. Alright, so one important note for lower third text, you usually don't want your title font and your name font to be the exact same. I usually like to have the title font in all caps. You can click this all caps icon right here. And I like the name font to appear as both upper and lower. But you can always switch those around and customize it for however you want your lower third to look. I also usually have the title font a bit smaller than the name font. Again, that's something that you can switch up. If your font choice has multiple options for styles like bold or italicized, thinner, thicker, whatever, definitely mess around with those and try and get a look that works for you. I'm gonna go with this bold option here. If you're building out a lower third and you know you want flexibility to edit it in the future, maybe change the name or the title or something, you wanna consider this early in the process. Here is an example. If I wanted the name and the title elements to keep the same position how they have it now, but I want to change what the name reads, this setup won't work. Watch. A shorter name or a longer name will be positioned differently, so what we have to do is change the paragraph settings of our text element. For the name, I want the right aligned text, and for the title, I can leave it as left aligned. Then I just have to reposition my name element. Now watch if I change it, the positioning still works. Alright, so now we have our basic setup and now we can start animating it. There are many ways to do this, sliding is one of the most common. Instead of sliding it up or down, I'm going to slide these text elements from the center out. Let's create a position keyframe for these, maybe a second or so into our timeline. To know exactly how much we want to move our text elements, I will create a rectangular shape layer. Set the stroke to zero and the fill opacity to something like 15% for now. I'll draw a very long rectangle right in the middle of these text elements, going over the title element. Now I'm going to hit Y. This brings up the tool that will allow me to move the anchor point. The anchor point is the center of all animation for that selected layer. There's some free scripts that will let you do this instantly, but I'm going to show you a manual process to change your anchor point position. Drag your anchor point to the middle left of your rectangular shape layer. You can zoom in with your mouse wheel and hold spacebar if you need to center your window. Once you have that anchor point perfectly centered, you can hit V to bring back your cursor. And I'm just going to zoom back out, duplicate the shape layer with Ctrl D or Command D, and now hit R. This will bring up your rotation settings. I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. Alright, so sometimes building out lower thirds can get fusing, so to stay organized, I'm going to hit enter to rename it. We can also use labels, which will help avoid confusion. Alright, so we don't need to see through these shape layers anymore. Let's bring the fill opacity all the way up to 100%. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is set my text elements to an alpha mat. This is essentially telling my text elements to only be visible where the shape layers are visible. Remember, the corresponding shape layers must be above above the corresponding name and title layers. It may not look like anything happened right away, but let's slide our name element over. Now you can see how it's working. Let's do the same to our title element and play that out. We're getting a pretty slick slide reveal. I want to make it feel a little smoother with some keyframe easing, so let's launch the Ease and Whiz script. It's free and it's fantastic. I use it all the time. Definitely go download it or another easing and animation script. These will save you so, so much time in the future anytime you're doing motion graphics or any type of animation. With both of my position keyframes selected, I'll change the ease and whiz to quint and set this to out. 
and hit apply. Now the animation is much smoother. Let's create a new null object, select all of our other layers and parent them to the null object. Now we can move the null object around and the rest of the layers will follow. I want some animation to build up to this text reveal, so I'll select all of my text and shape elements and drag them out to about one second or so in the timeline. I'm going to create a shape layer, just a simple line, and change the color to orange. Increase the stroke to somewhere around 5. The anchor point isn't at the center of my line, so let's go to Layer, Transform, and Center Anchor Point in Layer Content. Now I can rotate it a little bit, and let's parent this to our null. If you want to move your text elements around, you can do so easily. Navigate to one of the position keyframes. You can do this with the J and K hotkeys. Select both position keyframes. Now you can move the entire text and its animation. I'm going to move these a little bit just to look a little cooler. All right, so now back on the first frame, let's rotate this stroke backwards. Make sure your stopwatch is toggled so you are creating keyframes. Let's get back to our last rotation keyframe here and set a keyframe for the stroke width. Back on the first frame, let's set it to zero. Now let's hit U to see all of our keyframes for the shape layer. So select all of them and we're gonna use the Ease and Wiz script one more time. I'll just use the same settings we had before. All right, so now we are almost done. If we want the lower third to animate out, the easiest way is to select all of our layers and pre-compose them together. Go to Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping, and let's create another keyframe right after our animation is done revealing right around here. Now I can delete the last keyframe, copy paste the new keyframe we made here, and now copy paste the first keyframe. This essentially is just reversing the beginning of the animation. All right, and now we have the lower third animating out. This is the basic setup, but once you have something like this built, it is easy to add and customize it however you want. I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any ideas for future tutorials, please just leave them in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to Just Alex Halford's channel and check out my channel, Production Crate, for visual effects, content, and awesome tutorials. That does it, everyone. I will see you all next time. Bye.